Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and the iPhone 12 Pro Max has been out for about two and a half years at this point. I wanted to help you decide if maybe you should still pick one of these up or maybe upgrade from this to the later 13 Pro Max or 14 Pro Max. And so this currently is available at around $820 new from what I could find online. Apple seems to be selling it on Amazon directly from from Apple, but they're selling it for over $800. It's about $600 to $700 renewed and about $500 used for the 128 gigabyte variant. Around $500, I think this is a phenomenal deal. Now, one of the things I really liked when they launched the 12 Pro Max was this new color, the Pacific Blue color. After this, they went to Sierra Blue, then they went to Deep Purple, like we have here, and both of those are really nice colors, but I personally liked the Pacific Blue as far as the last one, other than the typical space gray, silver, or gold color. So, I liked this one out of all of them probably the best. The overall design introduced the squared off design that we hadn't seen for quite some time. When we went from the 11 to this, they squared off the edges, made the back completely flat and the front flat, and it was just a really nice design. Of course, we still have the notch and we'll talk more about that in a moment, but the design is great to be able to hold. It's less slippery than the 11 Pro Max. Some people don't like that as much because it can feel like it's sharp on the edges, but it's something I personally like as it brings back thoughts of the iPhone 5s and iPhone 4 generations. The design is quite nice in that it's stainless steel around the outside edge, and it does scratch a little bit over time since the stainless steel is a bit sensitive to that, and it does show fingerprints, but it seems to hold up pretty well. If you were to look at it maybe under a macro camera, you'd see some little scratches here and there, but in general, it seems to hold up well. Of course, that all goes away if you have a case on it. Also with this generation, Apple introduced ceramic shield. So we have glass on the back, ceramic shield on the front, and it seems to hold up really well, much better than the 11 Pro Max. So we do have some scratches here. You can see in the bottom right, there's some here sort of in the middle. If we turn the display back off, you can see those, but it's held up really, really well. A few very light ones at the top. I'm not sure what they're from, whether that's bumping other cameras from different phones, but in general, it's held up really well. All of that can be prevented by using a screen protector in case, of course. When I went to make this video a couple weeks ago, turn on the phone, start using it again, and plan to make the video, write the notes and things like that, one thing I noticed right away was how thin this was compared to the 14 Pro Max. Initially, I didn't think there'd be much of a difference, but the overall feel is much different. At least when you're hanging on to it, it's much thinner and it's definitely a little bit lighter. So we have 8.03 ounces or 228 grams. And with the 14 pro max, it goes up to 8.47 ounces or 240 grams. There's definitely a weight difference. The 12 pro max feels much nicer, better balanced, and just feels like maybe a nicer, more refined phone. Because of that, we of course get bigger features with the newer phones with the bigger camera bump. We have a better camera in theory, but in general, I like the overall feel of the 12 pro max a little bit better. Now, as far as the display is concerned, we still have that OLED display. It's quite a nice display, but it's not as bright as today's displays. Same resolutions, but it's 800 nits and 1200 nits in HDR. So if we go into YouTube, We'll go to HDR video. You'll see we have the option here for up to 2160p. And this is one of my videos. If I tap on this, you can see how bright it is. And because this video is not in HDR, it'll just be too bright to see. But this goes super bright, plenty bright enough for any of the videos I make anyway, up to a thousand nits. And of course, outside you'll sh you should be able to see it pretty well. It did have a little tendency to get warm in the summer and bring the display temperature or display brightness down as the temperature went up but that's something that they still sort of struggle with even today. iPhones have gotten better with it, but if you're in super bright sunlight, maybe you'll wanna go with the newer one, but this is fine for most people. As far as PWM or pulse width modulation, the way it controls brightness, I've mentioned this in many of my videos, it flashes faster or slower to control brightness. The newest phones are doing this a little bit better and at a higher rate over a certain brightness. You can see that here at 240 frames per second in slow motion, but to your eye, you can't actually see this. So it's something that may cause eye strain for some. It's an OLED display made by Samsung. They all use PWM and it's just something that they have. Unfortunately, it may bother some people. So if it does, you may wanna go with the latest phones as they don't tend to have this issue as severely. It's at a faster rate over a certain brightness and almost DC dimming where it's not flickering at all. So it's something that you really 
shouldn't have to think about too much unless you're super sensitive to it. As far as the overall speed, well, it has the A14 Bionic with 6 gigabytes of RAM. It still feels plenty fast, no real issues there. If we go into Geekbench 5, you'll see 5.57 gigabytes or 6 gigabytes of RAM. It feels plenty fast, no issues there. ProMotion is smooth and fast, and this one's actually on iOS 15. My brother is using one on iOS 16. They seem to be nice and fast, going into different apps, loading. We'll wait for this to give me a little splash screen here loading, scrolling, going into browse. Again, we'll wait for it to load. It seems to be nice and smooth. No issues here. I haven't seen any issues on iOS 16 and it seems to be keeping up just fine. So no real issues playing the latest games. Of course, the latest processors may be a little bit more efficient, maybe faster, but there's not as big of a difference as you might think. And that is carried across to the camera where if maybe you want to go into the camera and take a picture quickly, it's nice and fast. If you want to zoom, you can do that and it looks great. You've got 4K 60, you've got Apple Pro Raw. You don't have ProRes for the video. That's something that came a little bit later, but you still have 4K HDR video. So it looks great. It does a great job. And I have a lot of different videos recorded with this in HDR reviewing the 12 Pro Max when it first came out. So it does a great job if you want to use it as a camera and the microphone's pretty good as well. So we'll go back into the camera, spin it around and let's hit record. Now we're recording with the forward facing camera of the 12 Pro Max. Now we don't get autofocus on the Front camera like we do with the 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max, but it's still pretty good. Audio should sound pretty decent compared to this microphone here that I'm not using at least for this part of the video, and it should get the job done. It records in 4K HDR and definitely looks pretty good, especially for not having full autofocus control. And so I think the cameras are doing a great job. They're definitely usable for YouTube videos and more. They may not be as good as ProRes on the newest phones, but they're still decent overall. As far as battery life, well, depending on what you read depends on how battery life is. Apple says 20 hours of video playback, three hours more than the regular iPhone 12. I went to my brother who still uses a 12 Pro Max full time and had him send me some screenshots. So let's look at those and you'll see he has 91% of battery capacity left on his 12 Pro Max. He's been using it for about a year or so. And then if we go back here, you'll see yesterday he actually had four hours and five minutes of screen on time at three hours and 10 minutes of screen off time. So he used about 60% of his battery at that point. So we should get another four hours or so, give or take maybe three hours, depending on how he's using it. But at 91% battery capacity, it's getting him through the day. He's not really having any issues. However, he would like something maybe that would last even longer, such as a 13 pro max or 14 pro max, but it definitely gets him through the day. This is also the first phone where Apple introduced MagSafe. So MagSafe incorporates a magnet ring around the back to help center it for charging. And this is just magnet paper that you can see the magnetic field from anything with a magnet. And so you can see the ring there with the little centering lines. And if we put on the MagSafe connector, it just holds it in place and you can even hold the phone with it. It's strong enough. So that's something they introduced that they still have today. And a lot of people are copying even on the Android side. So if you've ever wanted to use MagSafe, accessories this has it and it's where it was introduced this is also ip68 water and dust resistant up to six meters for 30 minutes and really seems to hold up well whether you're getting rainwater on it maybe you dropped it in some dirt it seems to hold up pretty well over time now also we get software updates for quite some time. Now Apple doesn't guarantee the software updates. This one has iOS 15 on it, but we could get 16 and probably up to iOS 18 or 19 at this point. We don't really know as Apple hasn't guaranteed it. However, we do know that they've pushed out security updates to phones that are much older than that. So we could get seven years of security updates, maybe even more, and it just depends on the device. So hopefully this will be supported for many, many years, but typically at least five years of regular updates with new features and then maybe some security updates after that. So it's great that it will be supported. One last thing I wanted to mention is the notch. Now this is the original notch that's a little bit bigger. They shrunk this a little bit later with the iPhone 13 series and now they've gotten rid of it altogether with the 14 Pro Max and 14 Pro with the Dynamic Island. Now the Dynamic Island is something I get asked about all the time and to me it's really nice to have but it's not a necessity. So when you're playing music, 
it goes to the top, press and hold, and then you can sort of see an interactive menu here for it. You can interact with it, tap on it, go back into music. It's not something that's absolutely necessary. I know some people don't like it and it's hard to reach if you're on the Pro Max. So you either have to use reachability and then interact with it. So it's multiple steps or just move your hand to the top. So that's something that I think is really nice, but not absolutely worth upgrading over. And if you're wondering if maybe you should update to the 12 Pro Max and you're on an older phone, well, that really depends on if someone's either handing it down to you or you can get a great deal on it. If you can get it for five to $600, I'd say it's probably a pretty good deal. However, there's a lot of different deals on the latest phones. So if you can get a similar price, I would get the latest that you can get. However, if you can get this used for a few hundred dollars, that's absolutely worth doing as it's going to get updates for years. Now, if you're on a 12 Pro Max and wondering if you should update to a 13 Pro Max or 14 Pro Max, I would say that depends on how happy you are with the device. As typically every September we get a new one and every three years we get a slight redesign. So this year it's said that we're going to get more rounded corners, still a flat display that rounds into the sides of a, a new device where it's a little bit more comfortable to hold, similar to an 11 but maybe not quite as rounded as that, more squared off. There's been a lot of different rumors about it. We don't know a hundred percent, but it seems like it will be a slight change as Apple changes it every three years. It should have a dynamic Island and a few other features, which we don't really know yet. Maybe improved cameras and more bigger battery upgraded chip, but we're still waiting to find that out. But if you're wanting the latest and greatest, I would say wait the next nine months for the upgrade. If you don't care and you can get a great deal on a 14 Pro or 14 Pro Max, I would do that. Either way, I think it's still a great phone, but it really depends on what's available currently where you are. It's definitely one of the better deals in 2023 for a high-end phone. It feels very modern still because it's squared off and of course, Without the dynamic island, you can tell that it's a little bit older, but some people really don't like that, so it doesn't make much of a difference. Everything else is good about it, reception and everything else, so I really have no complaints. Other than maybe that it's a little bit less battery life, it's a great phone. Let me know your thoughts about the 12 Pro Max in the comments below, and of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, I'll link it in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.